ranking the best all-time starting fives. I don't do all-time videos very often, and the last time I made this video it got taken down for copyright. But I wanted to remake it, so we're doing it again. I'm still not going to do too many more all-time videos after this, but I may still do a couple of all-time rankings, depending on how well this one goes over. As for the actual ranking though, a few things need to be said here, and we've got three rules. The first is that each team must have one player from every position, and it must be a player's natural position. Number two is that players can be used more than once for more than one all-time team. And number three is that these players be ranked on or off of teams based on how good they were for that team. And for a couple of special situations, for players who haven't played for that team yet, like Anthony Davis on the Lakers as of the making of this video, we're just going to base things off of how well he's expected to play. But enough with the rules, let's get started with number 30. With the Charlotte Hornets who have Kimba Walker, Eddie Jones, Glenn Rice, Larry Johnson, and Alonzo Mourning. The Hornets might be in this last spot, but they still have a solid all-around team with every one of these guys having been all-stars in their time in Charlotte. 29. The Washington Wizards have Gilbert Arenas, Bradley Beal, Karan Butler, Elvin Hayes, and Wes Unseld. And this is another team that's solid. The backcourt's extremely strong with Gilbert, having averaged almost 30 a game in his best season, and Beal with 25 a game. Then, even though the frontcourt could be better, it's still not too bad. And before we get any further to number 28, I want to give a quick shout out to Raid Shadow Legend. It's the hottest new mobile game of 2019 and still growing every day. In just 6 months there's already been over 10 million players worldwide who've downloaded the game. Personally I recently downloaded the game and I've really been getting into it. But I'm not the only one because there's over 336,000 reviews on Raid with nearly a perfect score. And it makes sense because I mean look at these graphics and the details on those champions. With tons of options to customize each one. And on top of that, Raid is developing at a rapid rate too, with the new Faction Wars feature now being live. And a good game's nothing without gameplay, but that's covered too with an amazing storyline, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and much more. Plus, if you're new, there's an awesome rewards program for new players. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and from them you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Now we can get back into the video with number 28, which goes to the Grizzlies. For Mike Conley, Mike Miller, Rudy Gay, Pau Gasol, and Marc Gasol. I mean, nothing too exciting here. We've already seen Conley, Gay, and Mark play together, and they were a solid playoff team, but didn't end up accomplishing anything major. But hey, with both Gasol brothers on the same team, who were both all-stars, who knows? The number 27 spot goes to the Pacers, who have Malcolm Brogdon, Victor Oladipo, Paul George, David West, and Jermaine. O'Neal. Mark Jackson is the one who usually takes the spot as the Pacers all-time point guard, but I think after this season, Brogdon can come out as the better player. Then I have Oladipo over Reggie Miller for what he brings on offense and defense. And with the rest of them and Jermaine down low, the all-time Pacers would be a real problem. At 26, the Knicks have Walt Frazier, John Starks, Carmelo Anthony, Amari Stoudemire, and Patrick Ewing. Some people might have expected the Knicks to be ranked higher, but I mean Starks isn't too great, and the rest of these guys all may have been considered stars, but they were never even the best at their positions, even when they were active players. In the number 25 spot, the Pelicans have Chris Paul, Drew Holiday, Tyreek Evans, Anthony Davis, and DeMarcus Cousins. I got the Pelicans ranked higher than a lot of lists do, because with how good CP3 was in his run there, the fact that Drew averages 20 a game while being a top tier defender, Tyreek was solid, AD was as good as he has been, and DeMarcus Cousins still put up 25 and 11 there before getting injured, which made this an easy choice. Because it all means they have a great combination of offense, defense, and 3 point scoring. The 24 spot goes to the Wolves, with Sam Cassell, Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins, Kevin Garnett, and Carl Anthony Towns. And because the former MVP in Kevin Garnett's at power forward, it meant that we couldn't include Kevin Love, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it works out. But still, we saw Jimmy Wiggins and Towns play together in the past, and they were a playoff team. Assuming they could all coexist, adding in an all-star in Cassell, and an MVP level Kevin Garnett, and the Wolves are set. Number 23 goes to the Mavs for Steve Nash, Jason Terry, Michael Finley, Dirk Nowitzki, and Tyson Chandler. I really wanted to put Luka Doncic over Michael Finley, but I just couldn't yet. Finley was a two-time all-star, and Luka's only played one season. As for the rest of the five though, Dirk won a championship with two of these guys, and the other two were arguably improvements from who he had on his team when he won that championship. 
and we're not talking about regular old Dirk. We're talking about a former MVP, which is great, but aside from Tyson, I do think these guys would be lacking on defense. 22 is the Brooklyn Nets, who have Jason Kidd, Vince Carter, Dr. J, Buck Williams, and Brooke Lopez. Almost all of these guys really had their best years in the Nets, and as a team, they're definitely solid. You got three top tier star players on the perimeter, and even though the front court isn't as good, they can both still hold their own. 21, the Denver Nuggets. For Allen Iverson, David Thompson, Alex English, Dan Isil, and Nikola Jokic. And this is a weird one. You might have expected Carmelo at small forward because he was great in Denver. I mean, he had five seasons averaging over 25 a game for them. But you gotta remember, Alex English is one of the league's most underrated scorers, and he had eight seasons averaging over 25 a game for them. And then it was tough at center, but I do think Jokic deserves to be in this five over Dikembe because of his all-around game. Plus, the scoring ability of all of them, combined with David Thompson and Allen Iversons, play a big part in what ranked them this high. Number 20 belongs to the Atlanta Hawks, who have Pistol Pete, Joe Johnson, Dominique Wilkins, Bob Pettit, and Dikembe Mutombo. No Mutombo for Denver, but we made it up by including him here. And when you combine his defense with the scoring of all these other guys, you got an elite team. Mutombo was averaging a steady 3 blocks and 11 rebounds a game, while the rest of these guys averaged over 25 points a game at one point in their Hawks career. 19 goes to the Blazers, with Damian Lillard, Clyde Drexler, Scottie Pippen, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Bill Walton. The only real weak point of this team is Scottie Pippen, because he was in the later years of his career. But even then, he was still a great defender, and this 5 really has everything. Damian Drexler on offense, Aldridge and Walton as a dominant front court, and Pippen still able to do the dirty work. 18, the Toronto Raptors with Kyle Lowry, Vince Carter, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Bosh, and Serge Ibaka. See, this one hurts because we had to leave off both Tracy McGrady and DeMar DeRozan, but it had to be done. Aside from that though, this team would give people some real trouble. Both Bosch and Ibaka can protect the paint and shoot from the outside, Kawhi can put the clamps on anyone, and Lowry and Carter can draft to the basket, as well as them always having a good all-around game, which means this is a complete lineup. Then at number 17, the Pistons have Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Grant Hill, Blake Griffin, and Bob Lanier. At center, I was originally deciding between Andre Drummond or Bill Lambeer, but I forgot all about Lanier, who definitely deserves it more. I mean, he averaged at least 20 and 10 in nearly all of his nine seasons in Detroit. Something Drummond and Bill have still never done. And with taking him, the Bad Boys Pistons backcourt, to go with two great scorers and all around players in Hill and Griffin, this is another team with a perfect blend of everything from offense and defense to aggression and skill. 16, the Cavaliers with Kyrie Irving, Austin Carr, LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Brad Doherty. It's basically the 2016 Cavs, with an okay player in Carr, and Dardy who was a 20 and 10 guy in his best years. With LeBron, this team already beat the Warriors, so adding an all-star center only helps their case as an all-time team. Now I gotta say that it's already been tricky on who to rank where, but it's around this point where things get really tough. So all these rankings might not be exact, but teams will be in a general area of where they should end up. And that leads us to number 15 in the OKC Thunder. In Russell Westbrook, Ray Allen, Kevin Durant, Sean Kemp, and Jack Sigma. Originally, I had James Harden as their starting shooting guard, but then I remembered Ray Allen on the Sonics, and I'm not putting OKC James Harden anywhere near Sonics Ray Allen. But we have him, two MVPs, and a solid front court, which is what landed OKC in the top 15. The Utah Jazz are number 14, because they have John Stockton, Pete Maravich, Andre Karlinko, Carl Malone, and Rudy Gobert. And here we have one of the best duos in NBA history to go along with one of the best scorers in NBA history. A solid player and the two-time defensive player of the year in Rudy Gobert. Mark Eden almost took the spot for center because he averaged over 5 blocks a game one year, but Gobert's a much better offensive player and is nearly just as good on defense. Plus, himself and Maravich are good complements to play off of Stockton and Malone's pick and roll game. 13, the Phoenix Suns with Steve Nash, Devin Booker, Sean Marion, Charles Barkley, and Amari Stoudemire. Just alone, Nash and Amari themselves were one of the greatest guard and big man duos ever. And Nash was a two-time MVP, Sean Marion was a lockdown defender, Devin Booker's becoming an elite scorer, and Charles Barkley was an MVP while on the Suns, while he never played with any other stars. So we can only imagine just how good all these guys would be together. Number 12, the Sacramento Kings with Oscar Robertson, Mitch Richmond, Peja Stojakovic, Chris Webber, and DeMarcus Cousins. 
And keep in mind that it was on the Kings where Oscar Robertson was averaging triple doubles. Then Richmond and Stojakovic both had seasons where they averaged over 24 points a game on over 42% from three, which was great for their era. And Weber and Cousins also both had seasons where they averaged at least 25 and 12. I don't see any weaknesses on this roster, and that's why they made it just outside of the top 10. Number nine goes to the Heat for Tim Hardaway, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Alonzo Mourning. And we had to give Mourning the slight edge over Shaq on this one. And we've already seen LeBron, Wade, and Bosh play together, but if we're assuming that the best 2005 and 6 version of Wade is in this starting five, they'd only be that much better. Plus, when they did all play together, their point guard was Mario Chalmers, and their center was Chris Anderson. Replace both of them with two all-time greats, and they easily deserve to be ranked this high. Number 11 belongs to the Clippers for Chris Paul, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Blake Griffin, and Bob McAdoo. Alright, this is where teams really start getting taken to an elite level. So we have part of the Lob City Clippers combined with the present day Clippers and Bob McAdoo who averaged 34 and 14 in his best season. And they're great because there's no weaknesses here. The Lob City Clippers never won a championship or even made it to the finals, but combine them with a better big man in PG and Kawhi, who instantly made the Clippers championship favorites this year, and that easily makes them one of the top all-time teams. Plus, they're another team with a perfect blend of offense and defense. Number 10, the Orlando Magic with Penny Hardaway, Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, Rashard Lewis, and Shaq. Grant Hill was good, but never himself in Orlando because of the injuries, and Richard Lewis had some of his best seasons there, but it gets better. I mean, Shaq was averaging 29-13-3 and on the Magic, McGrady had a season where he put up 32-6-5, and and Penny was a 6-7 point guard putting up 21 a game. There's real threats in the backcourt and frontcourt, and the only thing that can be said about this team is that they would be unstoppable. Number 8, the Bucks with Oscar Robertson, Ray Allen, Bob Dandridge, Giannis, and Kareem. This Bucks version of Oscar Robertson wasn't as good as he was on the Kings, because in Milwaukee he was averaging about 17 and 7, which still isn't bad, but the Bucks version of Kareem was the best version of himself as a player, with him averaging 34 and 16 in his best year. And then when blocks started getting recorded, he averaged three and a half a game. And combining both of them with Giannis gives them three superstars. They would lack in three-point shooting though because Ray's the only one on the team that can shoot. Then number seven goes to the 76ers in Ben Simmons, Allen Iverson, Dr. J, Charles Barkley, and Wilt Chamberlain. I mean, out of all of these guys, Dr. J was the only one who was able to win Philly a championship. But that was with all of them alone. Together, this is as complete of a team as you'll get, besides Ben Simmons' jump shot. And AI's attitude. And Barkley's weight. But you get the point. Number 6, the Rockets with Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Tracy McGrady, Moses Malone, and Hakeem Olajuwon. It was hard to rank the all-time Rockets ahead of Philly because it really could have gone either way. But Westbrook and Harden are going to be serious contenders this year, but if instead of them having role players, you added on another all-time scoring threat in McGrady, a three-time MVP for Houston and Moses Malone, and one of the greatest centers ever, that's why they end up just outside of the top five. Then in the top five is number five, which goes to the Spurs for Tony Parker, George Gervin, Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, and David Robinson. Individually, all these guys might not be as good or as flashy as some of the others we've mentioned, but as you know, the Spurs have a winning mentality. They're winners. Under Popovich, all of these guys except Gervin won rings, with Kawhi winning one, Robinson winning two, and Duncan and Parker winning five. And having them all together makes me believe they would still be able to beat a lot of the teams that have more skill than them. Number four, the Celtics with Kyrie Irving, John Havlicek, Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Bill Russell. Now, Bob Cousy is usually named as the Celtics all-time point guard, but if we're just talking skill, I'm always taking Kyrie over him. Then Havlicek beat out Ray Allen because of his defense, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale are an all-time great duo, and as we know, Bill Russell's just a flat-out winner. The weakest point of the lineup would be Kyrie Irving based on how his time in Boston went, but being around so many other all-time greats, maybe he wouldn't be so bad. Number three, the Warriors with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, and Wilt Chamberlain. I mean, love or hate the Warriors, this one can't be argued. 73-9 and nine with Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and when KD was added, they were the championship favorites every year. Then if you added Wilt Chamberlain, we may be talking about a team that could go 82-0. 
Another team that may have the ability to do this is number two in the Chicago Bulls. For having Derrick Rose, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Artis Gilmore. They'd have Derrick Rose before the injuries, the three stars of the greatest team of all time that went 72 and 10 and won the championship, to add with a 7 foot 2 Artis Gilmore who put up 22 and 13 in his best years with the Bulls. Which makes me pretty sure that this team could go 82 and 0 in a regular season. But then there's number one, who there's never been any competition for, in the Los Angeles Lakers. For having Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kareem. And I don't even need to say anything except that I will say I'm putting AD over Pau, because while Pau did win championships, overall in terms of skill as a player, I think AD will come out much better than Pau was in LA. And that wraps up the video. Again, there was a lot to consider in these rankings, so it was tough. Which is why it's important to consider the general area that these teams are ranked instead of their exact placement. But with that said, hopefully you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.